Hi everyone, my name's Mike and I'd like to introduce you to this, the latest video on classic bikes that we've been doing. Today it's a bit different because we've got Richard who's going to be showing us his bike, which is a beautiful 1971 Triumph Trophy TR6C. I think I've got that right. Um, it's a US spec one, so it's uh, like a street scrambler or a desert sled. It's got this beautiful high level um, chromed exhaust on the side, on one side of it. It's lovely. So, um, yeah, I get to ride it at the end, at the end as usual. Um, lucky me. So, uh, yeah, over to Rich. Okay, so this is uh, this is Richard. Um, this is the first bike in the series that isn't owned by Dave, um, who's actually Richard's brother. Actually, twin, twin brother. Twin brother. So um, over to you, Rich, to tell us something about the bike and um, how you got it, most importantly. Yes. Okay. Over uh, to Rich. Right, as Mike just said, uh, whilst this is the first of the bikes on the Lemon Drizzle Gang videos, which isn't one of Dave's, uh, he had an involvement in Safaras. as he's my twin brother and he gave this bike to me as a present, as a best man present about five years ago. Very generous of him. It is very generous of him and uh, it makes me wonder what I would have got from him if I'd done an even better job as a best man. <laughs> but there we go. No, I'm uh, very grateful for Dave. Anyway, um, a little bit about the bike then. This is a 1971 Triumph TR6C. Uh, Mike always has a joke with me that it's, is it a Triumph TR7, Rich? He said the one with the poppy up headlights. Anyway, no, it's a TR6C as opposed to a TR6R. The C stands for competition, whereas the R stands for road. And this is a C for competition, as I said, which basically means it's in a street scrambler style. Um, it's a 1971 and it's the first year that Triumph moved over to the oil and frame uh, chassis and uh, as the name suggests it carries the oil in a large central down tube in there. Uh, it was the first year that it was developed there were some teething problems and I think it's fair to say it didn't meet with universal approval. Uh, compared with the earlier Triumph twins um, they had a single down tube frame with an, uh, a separate oil tank. This is a duplex frame uh, and one of the criticisms was levelled at the fact that it was a far taller frame and people complained about the seat height. Uh, but it's ironic that these days everybody seems to want to ride an adventure bike with a tall saddle so whether people have got taller over the last 50 years I don't know. Anyway, what else can I tell you about the bike? Um, it's a TR6, as I said, as opposed to a T120, which is the Bonneville. Uh, this is, differs from the Bonnie in terms that it's a single carb. Uh, because of that, it's probably a, a few horsepower down on a Bonneville. But the trade-offs for having a single carb are it's smoother, it idles better, it starts better you're not forever having to balance the carbs uh, so you know I think it's something that's worth having uh, allied to that it's very economical if I'm just pottering along I can get 65 70 to the gallon and on this particular model it's a three gallon tank so it means it's actually got quite a practical range I can do a couple of hundred miles so is this US spec this is a US spec, but unlike the later T140 Bonnies, they were about two and a half gallons. This is a three gallon, but it's still got that lovely shape to it. So it's it's uh, a really uh, good asset to this particular and model. Exhaust, yeah, cool. and yeah, as Mike just said, uh, being a street scrambler model, it's got the twin up swept sort of desert sled exhaust system. Uh, one of the styling cues, which some people love, some people aren't so keen on, is the heat guard, which in the UK they used to call it a chip basket heat, heat guard, whereas the Americans used to call it a barbecue grill. So uh, I think it looks great, but... Yeah, barbecue grill sounds cool, doesn't it? It does. 
so what else have we got? Uh, this, as I said, was the first year of the oil in frame. It was developed by the new design centre that Triumph had set up in sort of 1970, which was called Umberslade Hall. Or uh, they used to ridicule it a bit and used to call it Slumberglade Hall because uh, they made some strange design decisions. Um, so what else uh, differentiates this from the Bonneville, which probably more people are used to? Uh, apart from single carbs, it's a single carb. It's got folding foot pegs. It's got a smaller headlight. It's got a single clock, no taco, although you could have a taco as an optional extra. And it's got the wider handlebars. Uh, so there you go. Uh, being a first year, this was the only year, 1971, they did this TR6C. So it's actually quite a rare bike and quite sought after. Um, there we go. Lovely. All right. Well, as we do with everything, let's take it for a ride. Dead hard, me. Nice. Feels smooth, doesn't it? Put the same balance crank as in the bonnet. Oh, okay, yep. Right, this is me riding it now. And straight off the bat, I feel really at home on this bike so I don't know whether that's um, because I'm getting used to riding the older bikes but you can probably see from my riding I'm just you know when I, when I rode the um, the Bonneville I was uh, you know having a few problems with slip the clutch and that but um, it just feels very natural it feels very balanced a really sweet bike um, it's got a lovely smooth power it's got quite a bit of torque it differs from the Bonneville which I suppose is its contemporary this is the 68 Bonneville of Dave's um, I'm talking about um, it differs from that in that it is more of a soft power delivery which you would expect with a um, single carb and a lower state of tune but it really suits this bike well you know, you're looking down at that lovely chrome headlight, single clock that looks fantastic, and the big wide bars. 
and um, you know you could imagine yourself riding Big Sur or uh, Ventura Boulevard or in the canyons in uh, Los Angeles it's just and, and looking down at the tank and you've got that trophy sign and the uh, the Union Jack it's just the epitome of cool it's really nice um, it has the same front brake as on the Rocket 3 uh, works a bit better on this bike and I don't think it's because the brakes any better I just think because the bike's lighter and uh, <laughs> you're going a bit slower this has got a, a a natural it feels really natural around about 50 to 60 miles an hour this bike Richard assures me that you know you take it up on the motorway um, you, you can cruise at 70 but it's it's, it's not really um, at its best then uh, it's best on roads like this or even smaller roads where you can just let the uh, that, you know, you put it into top gear, it's got four gears, and just put it in top gear and uh, it just flows along beautifully. So, thinking about this bike in its day, and it's someone as a buyer um, coming at it, what they would have thought of it. So it was designed as a desert sled, so Triumph had quite a bit of competition success in California in the late 50s and early 60s. So this style of bike had a lot of credence and was quite a bit of competition success. And um, you know, I'm talking about guys like Bud Eakins who uh, did the riding for Steve McQueen in The Great Escape, and in fact Steve McQueen himself who did the international six days trial on a Triumph Twin, not a million miles away from this bike so it's just you could imagine riding it in in Los Angeles so you, you know or in California Southern California it's fantastic in the mountains you know in the canyons you do a bit a little bit of light off-road just a lovely bike and of its era I suppose like one of the American magazines asked the question, is this the world's best all-rounder? So, thinking about it, modern day bikes that this would compare to would be something like a, a Multistrada 950 or a uh, Yamaha Tracer or a Motoguzzi V85 TT, you know, something, a, a do-everything sort of bike. Um, but it's just beautiful, it's just lovely. I've really, really enjoyed riding this bike. And as always, I'd like to thank Richard for letting me have a go.